Hello there! Welcome back to your Oracle database tutorial series. This video we are going to be discussing indexes. Now the easiest way to understand indexes is let's just imagine you have a book, right? And you want to find something in this book. What do you do? Well you could, you know, go through it one page at a time and, and try to find what you're looking for, right? And eventually you're going to find something, but maybe not exactly what might not be the fastest way of doing things because it's going to take you a lot of time <laughs> So you use something that's known as an index which basically you just pop to the back and it's going to be like Oh, you're looking for this. You need to go to this page And so forth. So that's the easiest way to think of an index when it comes to database design Essentially an index is going to take a column and it's going to sort it in some way that you want to sort it either ascending or descending and then it's going to basically have a reference to where that data is. So that means if you're going through your table of users and you're looking for a specific username, as long as that username column has an index on it, you can just type in the username, it will alphabetically find it, and then it'll have a reference to wherever that data is, even if the table is not organized alphabetically. Another way to really grasp how useful indexes are is to imagine life without indexes. If you don't have an index on a column and you need to find a column using the select statement for example, your database is going to have to do what's known as a table scan. This is kind of similar to looking through a book for something page by page. It'll essentially just go one at a time through all of your rows until it finds that data. That's not the way to do it. <laughs> if you have it alphabetically, it's already going to know about where your data is so it's a whole lot faster. Now we need to answer a question, what should you index? Well thankfully, Oracle Database is actually going to index some stuff automatically for us. One thing that it will do that for is the primary key. The primary key is something we're often going to search for, we're often going to join tables using the primary key, and yeah, so we always want to have an index on the primary key basically. Oracle's going to do that for us by default. There's another thing that it will automatically create an index for, and that's when we use what's known as a column attribute, unique. So kind of like how you can tell a column to be not null or what data type it is, you can also say unique. And that's basically saying every single row has to have a unique value. It's kind of like a primary key, but it's not the entity, it's just an attribute of the entity. Think of like an email for a user account system. The chances are your email is going to have to be unique. So you might throw the unique column attribute on that column. Now I don't think Oracle does this by default, but another thing you should consider having an index for are your foreign keys. And the primary reason I suggest you do foreign keys is similar to why we have it for primary keys. It's because we use these keys to join data. So what is a join? Let's go into that a little bit so you have more of an idea of what I'm trying to explain here. Let's say you have two tables here. One is like a user account table and another is a comment table. You might have an individual comment that has the inside of the column of who posted it an ID of seven. But you don't have the ID of seven memorized. You don't know who that is. So what you can do is do a join on these tables and you can essentially turn them into one table. Now it doesn't actually store it as one table, it only presents it as one table. And the way it works is it combines the tables based on some kind of similarity, basically. So for example, we might have a user up here with the ID of seven, and we might have a comment down here from the user with the ID of seven. Then instead of having this as our table, we can have this. As you can see, this is a much better way to present this data because we know who the comment is from. You could also have the username here or whatever. You can combine things in so many different ways and you could literally make an entire series on just joins. So that's all we really need to talk about for now. But essentially, anytime you're going to be joining two tables very often, you might want to consider indexing the columns that they share. So this one has a user ID and this one has a user ID and you use those to kind of combine the tables. You're going to want to index those. 
The one up here in the user table, that's going to be a primary key, which is probably going to be indexed by default. But the one over here is going to be a foreign key. So you're going to need to index that if you so desire. Let's go through an example that's a little bit better. Let's say we have this website, and basically the point of the website is to send people good deals that are going on on the internet. So we might send them some links to Amazon or to eBay or some Black Friday sales, whatever's going on at the time. We essentially want to kind of get some revenue share from them buying stuff. So we have like literally five trillion rows of emails. <laughs> so we might want to consider indexing these. Well, we can actually index these as a group and index this entire thing. And this is going to make the query run at the optimum speed. This, my friend, is known as a composite index. These are going to be very important when you're making your queries because you're going to want your queries to be as fast as possible. So you might be wondering, well, if indexes are so great, why don't we just index everything? Well, indexes have their downsides too. Just like when you take a book and you change the contents of the book, you're going to have to update the index. So for databases, every time you update data, delete data, or add data, the indexes also have to be updated. Now the database does this automatically, so it's not something really super manual labor that you have to do, but it does slow things down. So you have to kind of balance. Do you want faster queries, or do you want faster inserts, faster updates, and faster deletes? Yeah, it's kind of a hard challenge. So basically what you want to do is you want to get all of the indexes that you're going to need, but not any more. Because literally every index is going to slow your database down more and more. That's why I've kind of given you this as a guide. If you're not entirely sure, this would be a good place to start. Make sure you have indexes on these, and anytime you're doing a specific query that you're going to be running numerous times and it's very slow, you might want to look into a composite index or just indexing whatever column you're looking for. It doesn't have to be unique to have an index. You can literally index any column. That basically wraps up our five video introduction to database design. There's actually some more database design topics that are really relevant to Oracle, and we're going to get into those as time goes on. But I didn't want to spend like years going over database design when we really just want to get into actually making a database and all that fun good stuff. So some things that are probably going to come up in future videos are data types. Data types are the type of the data. That was super unhelpful. <laughs> Every piece of data has some sort of type. Usually if there's quotes, it says this is a string. If it's a number without quotes, such as 12, it's usually an int or numeric or something like that. So we'll just, we'll just go with int for this case. So that's an integer, meaning there's no decimal point. You can also have dates and other kinds of data types, and we'll be getting into those as we start creating our tables. Another super really important thing when it comes to database design is naming conventions. Essentially what a naming convention is, is a rule that many people have agreed upon on how we want to name things. Now this is probably something I've neglected the most in this series so far. We haven't really talked a whole lot on proper naming conventions with Oracle. In fact, I've just been writing them basically as English, no naming conventions. But there's different kind of naming conventions you're going to come across in programming, in computer science, and database management systems. There's something known as camel case. There's Pascal. I'm not even sure how to pronounce that. There's two types of Hungarian notation. There's all caps or all lowercase and so forth. So you can see there's tons of different ways we can style things. And this just describes one word. But if you look at Oracle as a whole, there's a lot of different things that you need to consider. And that's one very big thing that's important because if you look at other people's code and they follow a different naming convention than you, you're not gonna be able to read it very well. So that's why I really recommend that you figure out the most popular, the, the best naming convention, and follow that one. There's sometimes conflicting naming conventions, and if that's the case, you can pick the one that you like. Now, there's also a whole lot of database design when it comes to presentation. Depending on your role, you may or may not be working a lot with presentations. Basically, presentations are how we present the data to the user or to the programmer or whatever else. 
So this includes things such as views. Views are basically a saved select statement, kind of. There's also joins, which we talked about a little bit. You're also going to have to deal with things such as stored procedures, stored functions. Uh, I had another one, but I forget it. Security. These are all things that are going to need to be designed. Now you might be the kind of person who manages the whole database as yourself if you're doing a project on your own, or you might just be working with one thing like, oh, I only do the data definition language, or oh, I only do data manipulation language. That all depends, but in reality you should try to know as much as possible, so having a rough idea of all of these things is very, very good. So as you can tell, this is kind of just an intro. Hopefully guys, it was helpful. I really, 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 really super appreciate you watching these videos. If you like them, please click like, subscribe, and of course, share them with all of your friends. Thank you. I'll see you guys in the next video. And I'm excited because we're finally going to be starting something new. So, prepare yourself.